Blessings to the spirits of these places, where I am, where you are. Blessings of the land there, the plants, the animals, the water, all of the people in your ecosystem. Thank you for holding space for us. Blessings to the original inhabitants of these places. For me, that's the Ohlone, the Yalamu, the Lomaitush. May your descendants know joy, justice, sovereignty in their land back in this lifetime and all future lifetimes. Blessings to the spiders and the mycelium, the one consciousness that connects us all. Blessings to my ancestors, guides, and guardians, and divine forces. Blessings to your ancestors, guides, guardians, and divine forces. Thank you for coming through with the clear messages of whatever we need to talk about today. And the blessings for all of us of clarity and understanding as we go into these difficult times. Blessings to the spirits of the Black Flame the ancestors of change, revolution, and anarchy. Thank you for standing with us today. Blessings to the mothers, the moon, the water. Thank you for holding us, drawing energy for us, and giving us the abundance and life-giving energy that we need to survive and to be reborn. Blessings to all who turn their attention this way. May everything that we do be for the highest good of all. May these messages come clearly without distraction or disruption. Blessings, Ashe, Aho, welcome. All right. So, I've been thinking about this for a long time, but really excited to actually just talk about it and kind of, it's somewhat exciting to just talk into the ether and also I'm excited about what conversations can come out of this because healing is the topic like obviously there's all kinds of things that we can be focusing our energy on so many things that are really important and not to diminish anything any struggle that's going on anybody who's holding space taking space doing whatever they need to do blessings to everybody and whatever they got to do to get through every single day of this madness but healing is really important To me specifically, I've gone through a lot of chronic pain in my life, and I know that a lot of other people go through a lot of chronic pain um, in different ways. Obviously, we're all going through our own things and have our own reasons for what's happening to our bodies, but we are collectively traumatized. We are collectively traumatized by so many things. And the topics that hit really hard for me right now are white supremacy and healing. And the ways in which white supremacy infiltrates the healing realms and makes healing feel inaccessible to the people who need it most. To the people who need to receive and take back their empowerment the most. which black people, indigenous people, people of color, just oppressed people across the board. Just we're in a, we're in a time where it's sink or swim. It's like, we, we have a lot of ancestral trauma to deal with. We have our own personal traumas to deal with. We live in a traumatic world. Because even if it's not necessarily super traumatic for you, or you're able to have some level of comfortability, that comfortability comes on the backs of the people 
that it was stolen from, the energy that was stolen from people, the land that was stolen from people, the resources that continue to be stolen and trashed. There's so many examples of it. Like I could be here all day explaining the examples. But I've been really focused on healing right now because I went through a period in the beginning of quarantine where I just could not do anything. I couldn't, I, I was getting myself to my therapy, which I'm, what a blessing to be able to have therapy right now, NET therapy, which highly recommend and we can talk about more later. But I was just not able to move. I was in so much pain. I was having lots of asthma attacks. And I'm starting to realize, like, as I dedicate more time to healing and learning and things, because I have that availability now, thank goodness, because of the particular situation that I am in, in this space, in this time. But I feel like I was able to bring myself here and there's reasons why I was able to bring myself here. And a lot of it has to do with my privilege, my proximity to whiteness and the freedom that is allowed to like young femmes of the world who are light skinned and whatever. I acknowledge that I have a lot of privilege and I also have a lot of things that are an oppression on me, on my family, on my health, my wellness. Um, and I think it's really important that we all like start to really get to the understanding of our own intersectionality and just like really have a comprehension around your own privileges and the ways in which you have things stacked against you and not not to sit here and play i i this is i completely want to avoid any kind of oppression olympic type things where we're we're trying to say who has it worse and whatever whatever and i think more melanated people have had it worse across the board and i think that that can easily be accounted for for a very long time and so we need to reckon with that and in order to reckon with that we need awareness and we need these healing techniques and for so long these healing techniques have just been stolen and co-opted stolen and co-opted stolen and co-opted and i've run into it in so many realms and it's so frustrating to me because, again, because of my proximity, because of my my light skin, because of the ambiguous brownness of me that's simultaneously unthreatening, but also like exotified. I'm able to move through certain things and to witness certain things, and I've witnessed a lot of things that are disturbing to me and frustrating to me and make me enraged and have caused physical illness in my body witnessing the things that I've seen and been through. And I'm coming to terms with that. And I don't think that I would have been able to come to terms with that without a quarantine, without like a forced stop, especially for me and my lungs the way that they are, you know, like the force stop had to happen. And I'm curious for other people how the force stop has manifested for you. And because I think that when we, whenever there's a stop, a lot of times other things that we were pushing down and stuffing inside of ourselves get pushed to the wayside until we stop. And when we stop, all of that energy comes out and we often get sick or something happens where we we are immobilized in order to deal with what is going on in our bodies. So again, 
I've been fortunate to be on a healing journey for a very long time now and gathering and accumulating knowledge and witnessing different ways that people move through it. And the thing that I see the most and the most frustrating thing to me is the access inequality to healing modalities. Healing modalities that were taken from people who gave it away freely and willingly in order for it to be compartmentalized into something that could be sold, packaged. So I've been learning a lot, as I previously mentioned, about quantum physics and epigenetics. And I'm realizing, I'm learning from these people, majority white men, some white women, but mostly white men. And I get to thinking about why is this the only avenue that is easily accessible for me to find this information? And why is it that these people, particularly white men, white women also, have so much time, energy, space, and availability to have studied this all their life, to have been, or for however long, and also the act of like just being empowered enough to feel like you could have the room, energy, time, and space to develop something. And I find myself really frustrated at the lack of acknowledgement that I see when I'm learning from these people. I've gained so much information, so much tangibly helpful information of realistic ways to heal my body and to see how other people have healed their bodies. And then I see these people just packaging it up to be sold, packaging up all of this healing. (laughs) And it makes sense why we as people of color Black people, indigenous people, would not feel comfortable listening to these scientists and these doctors and all of these studied people. And there's a lot of validity to what they are merging right now, the way that science and spirituality is coming together and ultimately proving itself. That's something that is groundbreaking, amazing, and really interesting, and also proof of the power within ourselves, within ourselves, within our atoms, within our energy. And we don't have access to it. And nobody is being held accountable for creating that lack of access to these things that our ancient ancestors knew. They knew about these things. They understood how to work this power within our bodies. They understood that we are energetic beings and we actually emit power and we can power ourselves. We can power the energy around us. We can regenerate. We can heal. But we've been so conditioned out of that. And now we have these people who have all this really valuable information. And number one, we don't trust them. And it's valid that we don't trust them. We've had experiments done on us for hundreds of years, more, thousands. Experimentation done on people, people put in zoos, people, and I mean, like even in Puerto Rico, they, they only stopped doing forced sterilizations in the 70s. That was really not that long ago on the grand scheme of things. And they still do sterilizations in Puerto Rico, but they just don't necessarily force somebody to do it when you go into the hospital and then they put you under and then they sterilize you. And that, that's... Like, 
to me, when I hear stuff like that or when I learn things like that, I really, really conceptualize the fact that it's insane that I'm here. Like the fact that I exist, the fact that I, that my great grandmother, grandmother, mom had me and made it to me is wild. Like, and the fact that I can sit here and have the availability that I've had to really heal myself, to move past a lot of chronic pain, to be able to curb my asthma without fully succumbing to Western medicine, because sure, I got to take an inhaler once in a while. But the more that I do these other things, like therapy, herbs, teas, the more that I can actually live my life, feel empowered, feel like I have some understanding of my body. I can understand when my body's telling me something and I can understand how to work with that, not only in a physical way, but also in an emotional way, in a mental way. And a lot of these things, we make them out to be way, way, way more uh, intense, intricate, hard to understand than they actually are. The techniques are very simple. But again, we don't trust the scientists. And why don't we trust the scientists? Because we have been the guinea pigs. We have been the ones that have been getting our energy pulled from us consistently in a multitude of ways, psychologically, physically, emotionally. We're being tugged at in every which direction. And of course, we don't trust the scientists. Of course, we don't trust the doctors. Look at what happens, what has been happening to black and brown women forever in terms of hospital care. I'm not a scientist. I don't know all the numbers. You can literally Google it and figure out. It doesn't take very much digging to figure out that particularly black women are just going into hospitals and dying, going in to have give birth and dying. And of course there's no outcry because we live in a white supremacist nation, 100%. Think about the numbers. Think about the numbers in population and why the Caucasian population is so high in this place that had indigenous people here for thousands of years and within a few hundred, their populations have been reduced to such a small percentage of this landmass of Turtle Island. Of course, we don't trust the scientists. But here's the thing also, because of the way that spirituality was stolen, beaten, taken in so many ways, from our people, and I'm talking about our people, the larger our people. We also don't really know how to trust spirituality. We could be given all of the tools, but also a lot of the tools are coming from white supremacist viewpoints because they decimated populations, took what they wanted, and then started to resell it. And that is what is constantly happening. And so we're, we're getting it from both angles where we, we don't feel like we can trust the spirituality. We don't feel like we can trust the science. But these people are absolutely benefiting from all of this. And we need to acknowledge this. I really, really want to drive this point home for people. People are benefiting from this. People are getting land because of this. People are getting healed because of this. People are moving out of chronic pain because of this. People, but you know what? A lot of this healing, it's not, it doesn't have the depth. It's an egocentric healing. It's a healing that doesn't have to address the trauma. 
the trauma inflicted by their own ancestors, trauma that they are continually inflicting to this day with their complacency in the world as it is and seeing how the world as it is. And they're just like, it's fine. I would rather go to brunch than care about anybody else because my life is the one that matters. <laughs> it's very egocentric. And I think that even because I notice that a lot of these wealthy people, they utilize a lot of these techniques, like their own intermingling of things, whether it be esoteric things or physical, spiritual healing, like they're drawing from a lot of different places, but not using it in a way that is like for the highest good of all. Because when we're working for the highest good of all, then we start to be working within our ecosystem. We start to be caring for our ecosystem. We start to do better for our ecosystem, which does better for us. And then we live in alignment with the world and then things can be a little bit brighter for us. But when you're just doing it for the money or the... I don't know, like the resources that you need in order to build your space station and go to Mars. I don't, I really, <sighs> colonization is not an end game thing. It's not going to work in the long term. It's just constantly moving and stealing, moving and stealing, moving and stealing. When we could be living in symbiote, in a symbiotic relationship with each other, with the planet, with the land. I'm just confused and at a loss for why that's so hard to understand, for why we, we're fighting against this so much and we're still trying to hold on to what it used to be even though we're having red lights flash in our face right now saying how it used to be was not working it wasn't working it's not working and are we really going to move into a place where we're all just getting snatched by the unnamed army that's staying at the Marriott that's staying at the Marriott and renting vans so that it can get taken around the city to swipe people off of the street for doing graffiti or asking that you don't fucking kill us I just like what is this it's so interesting. It's so, so interesting to try and find the balance between healing and understanding this larger situation that's going on. But you know what? It's not even about that larger situation. What it really is about is like, how can I be helpful in any way for helping people understand that healing is possible it's necessary it's much easier than we think it is and we have been fooled by white supremacy and the colonization within ourselves to think that it's out of our grasp or that we have to be some rich person in order to attain this kind of healing or this kind of transcendence out of our own suffering and oppression. I know that there are bars and I don't want to minimize the bars that stop us from healing ourselves, but I just really want to make it clear that we can do it and we have we we have to take our empowerment back 
It is beyond important <laughs> because really we can, I mean, we can, we can say fuck the world if we really want to and just ride it to in- extinction, the painful burning death of whatever, whatever that's going to look like. Because I think, I think that there are many realities happening concurrently, infinite realities happening concurrently, and all of them are being experienced, and it is our choice what we want to experience. And I, 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 can, I can already hear some people hearing that and being like, wow, that's incredibly esoteric, and I have no way to physically ground that into my reality. And so I choose to not hear it. And I'm like, okay, okay. If you can't, if that's if you can't really grasp the multiple reality thing right now, that's totally fine. But when you start to be able to grasp that, or if you begin to suspend your disbelief and try and grasp that, you're gonna see that you're less tied to whatever little story is going on for you. And I not I don't say that to minimize you. I don't say that in a shady way to minimize your story because of course your story is your story and it is everything. But also to step outside of that story and imagine possibilities that are beyond what you can see. That's what a lot of these rich people with privilege are doing. And I don't want us to do that. I'm not advocating for doing what they're doing and like this weird bastardized version of new age spirituality that doesn't take any intersectionality into account, doesn't take into account at all that all of their conventions are filled with white people. We're not going to, we're not going to think about that. We're not going to worry about that. We're just going to, we're just going to get our healing. We're going to get what we can when we can. And we're going to sell our meditations for $30 a pop. Like, girl, (laughs) I'm sick of people selling spirituality. And I understand I understand that you can sell a service, you can do a service, you can act as a tool in a way. Like when I when I do tarot readings, I see myself as a conduit. I see myself as a conduit to allow somebody else an opportunity to witness a mirror of themselves so that they can hopefully realize what is the best choice for them? I don't tell people's futures. I don't, I, 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 I just want people to have the most helpful information that they can have right now for whatever situation that they're going through so that they can have the autonomy to make the choice of what is right for them. And in this way, I am not a healer. I don't call myself a healer. I think that I am a facilitator for other people to understand that they are their own healers. And it's, it's only a matter of finding what the tools are that work for you. All you have to do is find the tools because there's so many tools, infinite tools, infinite ways that you can touch base with your your spirits and your ancestors, your guides, or whoever it is that you want to work with, whatever material elemental thing that you want to work with, there's infinite things that you can connect to. And it's just a matter of choosing one. And then it's funny because when we get too many choices, we often shut down and don't choose any. And I've been there and I've done that. And I've gone up and down and I've gone, sometimes I've been really good and on top of things and sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I fall short and I get mad at myself. And it's just, that's human reality. Unless 
I devoted all my time to completely going into my meditation and I just never came out and I never ate anymore. I do want to talk about fasting at some point, but that's probably going to be another day. (laughs) But I want us to really just like start to consider the fact that um, if we could just step outside of the discomfort around the obvious trauma that is left over from, I mean, things that are happening currently and things that have happened before in terms of like the colonization and whitewashing of science and spirituality. And we understand that this is ancient knowledge that is actually in our cellular system. It's, we, it is baked into us so many things, so much knowledge, so much energy, so much connection. So I'm going to, I'm going to say what my understanding of quantum physics is in a way, because I feel like when I say the word quantum physics, it's like, whoa, what is that? What, what? That sounds like something that would be really hard to understand and I would have to go to school for a long time to understand it. And yes, that is true. But you only need to understand enough of it to understand how it is helpful and to understand why it is helpful and why it changes the game with how we handle ourselves and our reality. So first we say physics. Physics is something that is more grounded in our collective understanding right now. Physics is the understanding of matter and how and why matter works the way that it does on this planet. That's what physics is, the physical realm. Quantum physics is the study of what is between matter, the energy. There's the particle and the wave. The wave is sound, it's everything, it's vibration. So when we're talking about vibes, we're not just talking about something that doesn't actually exist. Vibration exists. Vibes exist. Some people are more adept at picking up vibes, at understanding vibes, and even maneuvering vibes. Vibration is a thing that isn't really covered in physics because physics is focused on matter. It's focused on the particle. Quantum physics is focused on the in-between. So we're understanding the vibes. We're understanding energy. We're understanding how it is emitted. So quantum physics being the study of the energy. And then when you start to study the energy in between matter, You start to give a way and a name and an understanding to these things that are deeply esoteric and spiritual. Where many cultures talk about things like chi, energy, kundalini, these ideas of this energy that is moving through us, the chakra system, and the chakra system, how it aligns to the glands in our body and organs in our body, the energy centers of our body. I look forward to going into this more also in another time too, because it's a really deep topic and I want to talk more about the glands and how these chakra systems are actually brains, their energy centers in our body and their brains because they have neurons around them. But we can talk about that later because it's a more deep thing. But all this to say, understanding this aspect of ourself and centering ourselves in that is how we get in alignment and how we heal. And I truly believe that when more of us get into this alignment and healing, Even though, yes, to me, is incredibly annoying to see so many people just just constantly benefiting 
off of gaining this alignment and manifesting all of these things that they really want to manifest and seeing my people struggling over and over again or my people like just kids getting murdered in the streets by cops and people getting abducted. Like I can't take my eyes off of that. And the fact that we're just catching up here in the United States, but this has been happening all over the world and continues to happen to this day. Again, not trying to play the oppression Olympics out here, but there's all kinds of bad shit going on all kinds of prisons, encampments, raping and pillaging of people and colonization and patriarchy and capitalism destructively moving through all of our resources. And it's so easy to get bogged down in that and away from centering in ourselves and our healing. And the people who can center in themselves are the people who have the time and the resources and the support structures in order to get that. So my goal, how do we get these support structures to us? How do we unco-opt our spirituality, our science, our understanding of things and take it back and get our healing and get what we need? Because when we get our healing the black indigenous and brown masses of this world because (laughs) I don't know if anybody's looked at the numbers but there's way more black and brown people on this world than there are white people and like just in the same way that here in the United States or like here in my microcosm of the Bay Area There are more of us people who are aligned with this idea that we would just love it if you'd stop fucking killing us. We would love it if you would just stop making us pay rent in a global pandemic where we're not supposed to work, where we're not supposed to go outside so that we don't all just kill, like die or kill our families by passing around a virus that can be stopped. We need to take our power back. I'm ready. I'm ready to really figure out how we can do that. And I have ideas and I'm really excited for us to work on them. I hope, you know, I hope that if you're listening to this, you are excited about the idea of healing. I hope that you're excited about the idea of sharing and different ways of reality that don't revolve around the theft of our internal wealth and our external wealth and the wealth of the planet. We have the tools and it's not actually hard. The idea that is hard to heal is this psychological programming that's specifically to keep us not healing. Because when we are not healthy, we cannot be empowered. And if we're not empowered, then we will will more readily give our power away in one way or another. And I really just don't want to focus anymore on like, all of the ways that we are empowered, disempowered, you know? I wanna focus on how we can be empowered. And I'm interested in what people think would make them more empowered. I know for me, it's been healing. It's been not being in pain all the time. It's been understanding myself and understanding my strengths and my weaknesses. I want everybody to understand that we're all so, so powerful. I'd even venture to say melanated beings are more powerful in 
a way that they're just able to be connected to the solar energy so much more. Again, another topic that we'll probably have to save for another time. But <clears throat> we are incredibly powerful and we don't have to succumb to this thing that people would have us believe that there isn't enough time to do this or there isn't enough safety to do this. It is our job to create that safety for each other. And I see it happening. I've seen so much sharing and caring going on and sharing and caring is not what makes the front page news. It's not, it's not on the tip of everybody's lips, unfortunately. If it was, we would have an easier time focusing our energy in that way. But what, what we see more often is the heinous things, the horrible things, the way that everything is declining. And the more that we focus on that, the less time that we're spending devoted to each other, devoted to caring for each other and to finding ways for healing each other. And I want us to really understand like, what is it, what is it that you need in order to, in order to choose healing, in order to choose healing over the like fear mongering that is like consistently pushed on us to choose standing with each other. We have to stand with each other. The, it's our only hope at this point. There's too much, there's too much against us. There's too much imposition of psychological warfare, of physical warfare, emotional warfare. But I see us standing together. I see us like really building these bonds and I'm really excited about the momentum that we can get. And I'm really excited to hear what people think would be most helpful in terms of how do we heal each other? How do we build networks of mutual aid, specifically networks of mutual aid in times when we are scared to interact with each other? We're afraid of who you've maybe seen, who, who they've seen and how things can get passed. And that's valid and we're all on different ends of the spectrum depending on what's going on in our lives and what's going on with the people around us and who we're connected to there's so many factors that we have to take into account right now but we still have to heal we still have to take this power back into our own hands and we still have to do it in a different way that doesn't come at the expense of other people and we have to get in alignment with the truth of what has been going on for so long and stopping just our rampant theft and stopping the inner colonization that keeps us from understanding that every single choice that we make has an effect and every choice that is made has an effect. And there's so many realities that we can be in and we need to be open to the possibilities of more, of other things happening and coming for us. And so I would like, I would like us to try something together. And I hope that this works for you. This is something that I learned from this uh, neuroscientist who is very much just one of these white men who has had a lot of time, who had the perk of being told from not only probably his parents, but from society that he can have and do whatever he wants. Because society reaffirms that in white men and it has for a long time, that you can, that they can have whatever they want and they could reach for the stars and they could even get it. Whereas 
I was told my whole life that I couldn't, that I wouldn't, that nothing would ever, nothing good would ever come of my life because that was what was ancestrally reinforced to my family. It's interesting to me. So this person, Joe Dispenza, he got in some kind of an accident, shattered his spine, but had this seed within himself that he was able to nurture where he would be like, they said, surgery, surgery is yada, da, 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 you're probably going to be paralyzed. Good luck. And he's like, how about I don't do the surgeries? And how about I just tell myself that I can do this, that I can heal. And lo and behold, he heals. And then he does a bunch of studies on science and the placebo and, and how the placebo actually works. And then how can we make the placebo effect work without actually having to have a placebo? How can we just train our brains to understand how to heal itself just by believing that we can? And lo and behold, it happens. He, he was supposed to be paralyzed. The man is standing and walking and doing all kinds of seminars. At least he was before COVID was happening doing all kinds of seminars and preaching the word of neuroscience and how neuroscience converges with quantum physics and with the chakra centers in our bodies and with healing techniques. And I've listened to a lot of talks by him at this point and um, seen his books, haven't gone through all of them because for me personally I don't need all of the science breakdown to believe this stuff. I was already a spiritual person believing in spiritual things before science figured out how to explain it. But having some of the explanations makes it much more easy for me to understand how it works and hopefully to explain that to others. So this particular thing that I want to talk about. It was something that he was talking about, which is the movement of the spinal fluid and how it cycles through the body twice a day, every 12 hours. But by doing this particular breath, you can cycle this spinal fluid up and then cycle it faster through your body. So it's, it's moving more through your body. And what this does, especially when you're tightening on the way in. You're doing an in-breath and you're tightening from the sexual organs up, tightening into your chest and tightening everything, but still expanding. Tightening while you're breathing in, hold, and then breathe out and push open all of these energy centers. And in doing this and cycling this spinal fluid up by tightening you send it up and you think about it going into the pineal gland, which is center of your head, but like in the middle, center middle. You've got a tiny little gland, which is the pineal gland. And the pineal gland is covered in crystalline structures. And if you know about crystals, they're not just things that hippie white women have to cleanse auras around houses. They're actually things that are used in mechanical things, in computers and so on and so forth. Um, quartz crystal is used for amplifying energy. And when you put mechanical pressure on it, it creates energy. So that's what's happening in our pineal gland. Inside of our pineal gland, or on the outside of the pineal gland is all of these crystalline structures. And when you are actively bringing up this spinal fluid and you're forcing it against your pineal gland by, by putting your attention on the pineal gland and imagining and feeling this active energetic and physical movement of the spinal fluid to the pineal gland, you're activating it with piezoelectric energy, I believe is what it's called, 
Again, not a scientist, don't care to be a scientist, don't care about it except for the fact that it helps me explain what is actually happening in this to make it more effective for you and me. So in doing this, we create this piezoelectric, piezoelectric energy <laughs> against our pineal gland and we're activating it. And then we're activating the pineal gland, which makes us open to this extrasensory ability that we have via the third eye, the third eye, the seeing. And this is tapping us in to the energetic center of our body instead of just being in the physicality of our body. And I'll go into this more maybe when we talk more about quantum physics, but what is brought up in the quantum physics is that we are actually more energy than we are physicality. And so tapping more into our energetic bodies in this way can really bring a different level of understanding to our physical reality. And then in this different level of understanding of our physical reality, we can make changes. We can heal. We can do things for ourselves that really changes the way that we live our lives. So I would like to, for a few, I, I, we'll, just, we'll just do a few breaths. I would like us to just really like try this out, to really think about how this could really, just actually, you know what? Don't think about it. Just don't think about it at all. Let's just do it. Just do this. Practice this breathing thing with me. Try it out and see if it makes you feel anything. See how it affects you at all. If it doesn't affect you at all, you don't have to ever do it again. I have felt some effects, to be honest. To be 100% honest, I have felt some effects. And so I wanted to share this with you because I had to listen to this man explain, explain, explain on so many different programs all of it really helpful information that I took lots of notes on that I'm really excited to like go deeper into. But at the end of the day, it really can just be as simple as trying out this breath for a couple minutes every day and dedicating yourself to just trying it and just seeing what happens after you've done like 20 days of this breath a couple minutes every day. So... Let's try it together. So what we're going to do is on the inhale, breathe in and start tightening from the bottom up, tightening into the stomach, tightening into the lungs, bringing the energy up, tightening and feeling it going into the third eye, holding your breath. and releasing, opening up all of those organs and pushing the pressure down into your lower organs. And we're going to do a couple of those. And imagine that spinal fluid going up and hitting your third eye chakra, your pineal gland, and then the energy going down, that fluid going down into your body to recirculate. Imagine this fluid moving through your body, going up into your head, hold, and out again. And 
feel that energy, electric energy, hitting up into that center of your body. And breathe out, push down. And it may take some time to get into the rhythm of that. I've been practicing it for a little while now and I really feel the difference that it makes, especially when I uh, combine that with a, a chakra meditation. But the fact of the matter that I'm trying to get across here is that it's very simple and that this if you, if you need more of the science behind it, I highly recommend you actually go listen to some talks by Joe Dispenza. You can find, he's, because, again, because of this inherent privilege that comes with whiteness, particularly white males in this society, there has been more room for him to be able to do this healing within himself and then to turn around and to find ways to do this healing with other people and to because he has a scientific background to take the science behind it and get case studies so you can see you can see he has people hooked up to the machines that study the brain waves and you can see the way that the waves move depending on the way, the way that you're feeling or the way that you're doing these particular breathing meditations and so on and so forth. And you can really see because so it goes from beta, which is like just being really in our physical bodies and then moving into, I think it's alpha and theta or theta and alpha and theta, I think, and then gamma. And the way, and you can get into these frequencies in your brain waves simply by doing particular breaths, particular meditations, particular types of opening like that. And it's about time that we take this back, that we take this type of healing back for ourselves, that we understand that it doesn't have, like, it can be a long and arduous journey towards healing, but it can also be much more simple than we have thought that it could be. And the people who don't want us to know that it's that simple or don't want us to have access to it or trying, because a lot of these things, a lot of these really simple methodologies that they are teaching are free. Their free knowledge. It should always be free knowledge. But so often, it's like a thousand dollar retreat. It's learning, it's learning from the shaman or something. And like just super inaccessible things that aren't taking into account the fact that the people who really, really need the healing don't have access to it. Or the people that the healing techniques were stolen from don't have access to it. That's what really kills me. We, we need to start taking all of this back and we need to start sharing it widely. And this whole, this whole cap on spiritual understanding and mystery schools needs to be uncapped. We need to throw the cap off of it because we don't have time for this anymore. Like we need more people to get on the healthy healing path. Otherwise, there might not be hope for our species. Many other species that have already gone the wayside because of us. Many more that will continue to go the wayside because of us. It's time. It's time to reel it in to take back our energy, to focus on centering ourselves, 
And whatever proof that you need, we could get you that proof. We can Google search you and get you that proof. And we need to stop <clears throat> just writing things off because they're too woo or something or because it's suspect coming from these white people. Like, I get it. It is suspect. But at the same time, they're the ones who have had the privilege of time and energy and space to go around the world and go co-opt healing practices only to find out that they are incredibly similar cross-culturally. There are tons of similarities, just different languages and different styles of enacting. But if you really look at a bunch of different cultures across the globe, you'll see that we're still utilizing the same things. We're still utilizing the glands, the minds, the different minds. We think of our mind as just this, the brain. But really, we have lots of minds because we have lots of centers in our body that are surrounded by neurons that are firing and that have their own chemical compositions and their own hormones that are dictating how we move through the world. We have lots of minds and we're only focused on this one and all of these other ones are running who knows where because we haven't been focused on alignment. We haven't been focused on health. And when we, when we do get a picture of health, it's sold to us in some capitalist form that makes us inherently uncomfortable because it seems skeezy. It seems skeezy to have to pay thousands of dollars to get something that was stolen from somebody else forcibly. Does anybody see the backwardsness in this? Do you see, do you see where this runs up against a brick wall? When you're, p you're paying and charging a premium for something that is stolen and co-opted. And again, makes perfect sense why you would be suspect about that. But it works and it's real. Healing is possible. The placebo effect is real. We can change the way that our brains are patterned. And it can be less mystical than we think, but we have to be open to trying. So I hope that little breath work was something that can maybe spark an interest and maybe you'll try it for a few days in a row and maybe you'll get a little bit more comfortable with it and you'll start to feel something different in your body or start to just get open to an idea of like, maybe things could be different. And that's all I really want right now. I'm not asking us to go tomorrow, we're healed. No, I'm just saying that we could be open to healing. We could be open to imagining different realities. And I really want us again, Here's another thing that we could just all start to imagine. I really want to get into the habit of imagining different realities. Imagining instead of being just afraid of what could come or what, or like Donald Trump saying, oh, I'm going to send my police force to squash all dissent in every city. Like, I don't subscribe to this. I don't subscribe to this and I will not subscribe to this. I want, I want us to collectively think together, just like feel, feel what it would feel like if Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, all these billionaires across the world just were like, I'm going to redistribute my wealth. I have come to the realization that it is time for me to redistribute my wealth and that I understand that nobody should have this much money and we can give it away freely and everybody can have a cushion where we can all figure out what our best pursuit of our lives should be and can be. 
and all of the military people walk off of their jobs because they're done listening to people who just want us to kill each other and we start to find ways to heal our PTSD that we all have traumatic stress whether it's from our life or our ancestors lives we're carrying it in our DNA and we don't have to be slaves to our DNA we can make our DNA work for us and Another thing that I look forward to talking about because that is a deep subject of epigenetics and how we can make, we're not, we're not doomed to whatever our genetics have put into us. We are open to reprogramming our genetics and it's all about how we take care of ourselves and it's all about how healthy we are. And so we are tasked with healing, but healing in the way that doesn't require capitalizing off of that health. Healing in the way that is available to all of us because when we are all freely available to have healing, we're gonna realize how much better we can do for each other, with each other, and for ourselves. (sighs) Thank you. Do this little blessing. Blessings to the ancestors of this land, this place, our ancestors and guides that walked with us today in this podcast recording. Blessings to the One Consciousness, the Black Plain ancestors, the original inhabitants. Blessings to the mothers. May all who need to return their attention elsewhere, please do so. And for the spirits who continue to walk with us and guide us, thank you for your support. Blessings. Ashe. Aho. Farewell.